Hi everyone, hello. The FIDE World Rapid ended today in Samarkand, Uzbekistan, where Magnus Carlsen from Norway won the open section, while Anastasia Bondaruk from Russia won the women section. So big congratulations to the winner. Uh, as far as my my YouTube channel is concerned, what it means is that I did again ask for the day one and two i selected a few tactic puzzles from from the games that i found uh, interesting and instructive and i'll be sharing them today so for this video we have 10 positions if my notes are correct i hope they are so without further ado let's get down to those positions the first position i have here is a game between vidit and uh, anton Korobkov. Here, White is trying to build the attack and pressures the pawn on a7. Anton here plays the move a6, sort of trying to release the tension on a7, but uh, Vidit found a very nice combination, which eventually uh, gave him a winning advantage. You can pause the video for a second, see if you can find it. The right um, continuation here is rook takes a6, pawn takes a6 is essentially force and we take with the queen, we win back the rook on c8 and capture even pawn on uh, c6 as well, so it's a completely winning uh, position for white, so essentially from this position we managed to trade those rooks and even win those three pawns meantime, so nice um, continuation which obviously uh, we did found and went on to win the game this one was from the open section round 10 now we are moving to the women's section round 9 here we have a game between Hotanashvili Bella and Munchul Turmuch in this position uh, white played the move rook to a7 um, attacking the, the pawn on b7 and if black takes uh, trying to get a strong pass pawn on a7. I uh, can pause the video for a second and try to find the um, continuation that Black had in this position. Uh, what Black could have played here, this, this line did, did not happen in the game, but they could have uh, taken on f2 with the capture. Um, white really cannot take this knight because if they do take this knight with the with the king what's happening is there's a check on b2 now we are um attacking the rook so we are threatening to capture the rook on the next move white can play rook to c2 but then we have another check and double attack this time we are going to win the rook on a7 and uh, uh, something like bishop to d4 is not gonna uh, solve the problem because after takes takes we still win the rook and we are in a position where we are um, up in exchange and if after um, knight takes f2 if white doesn't take the, the knight this move comes with the fork and will um, capture the bishop on h1 after white moves the queen somewhere and in the meantime we won the pawn on f2 so very nice um, combination which would have given black significant advantage uh, we're moving to open section again round 11 again it's a, a tactic that happened in the game between Vidit and Arjun to heavyweight clash of Indian Grand Masters what happened here I mean at this point but black is already uh, uh, winning, so it's 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 very difficult, or I would say, uh, borderline even not possible to save this position for uh, white, at least objectively. I mean, and here white played the move knight to h5, after which we did found a very nice way to end the game on the spot. You can pause the video for a second and see if you can find it. He played this brilliant move, queen to f2, and the idea here is that after. Uh, white moves to uh, king h1 for instance and th the same actually would, would happen even if they move to h3 we can uh, sacrifice the queen on e1 and we play knight to f2 winning back the queen with the fork and we're gonna be up a rook uh, the next combination is still from round 11 and the open section we have a game between uh Aydin Suleimanli and uh Sindara Jawahir so here the young 
Grandmaster from Azerbaijan played the move queen to f5, which allowed black a uh, tactical trick. You can see if you can find it yourself. The idea here is that black, uh, white has obvious bank back rank issues and this rook on a1 is not defended so black takes an advantage they're, they're taking the pawn on d4 white really cannot take it back because after queen takes d4 we are threatening the mate on d1 and we are attacking the rook on a1 and since white cannot take it we eventually won a pawn here Still round 11, now this is the uh, game played between uh, Kezin Roman and Aryan Tari. In this position it's black to move, it, it looks like the uh, knight on e3 is a, a capturable piece and actually black takes the knight on e3 with the rook. You can pause the video for a second and try to find a way that Aryan won this game. Aryan used the fact that this pawn on f7 is pinned and there is a white pawn on h5 uh, defending the g g6 square so he played the move rook to uh, queen to g6 check and it turns out that white has an unstoppable mating attack so the white king cannot run to 7th rank because of the rook and here they're essentially getting uh, Made it so very nice idea that uh, Ariantari played to win the game. We are switching to the woman section here. I have a position, it's a game played between Irina Crush and uh, Balabayava Xenia. Um, this one is actually my favorite of the round, if not probably favorite of the whole tournament, if I'm honest with you. Uh, Blackie played rook to f3. Um, trying to force some trades or trying to uh, offer some trades and uh, Irina here had a great tactic great idea which unfortunately for her she didn't find I would like to offer you to pause the video and see if you can find what white could play here uh, what white could do here is to use the fact that black king is sort of boxed in and uh, if we could give a check from the uh, c6 or from this mm, diagonal black king would essentially be mated and the right move here is bishop to b5 brilliant brilliant move what happens here is that we are threatening to take on uh, c6 and we are also attacking the rook on f4 twice as you can see it's defended only once but we are attacking it twice and if black takes on uh, e3 we, we we can take on uh, c6 while either queen or the bishop i think probably the most elegant one would be taking it with the rook because after rook takes bishop takes and it's a checkmate uh and if they don't take with the pawn i think engine uh, suggests to play the move c5 to stop the mate we take on uh f3 and after bishop takes queen takes we're up at p so very very nice move uh it's certainly not easy to find an idea like this but after rook f3 bishop to b5 wow this is really beautiful, um, the positions that I think I will remember for a very, very long time. Brilliant stuff. Uh, uh, now we are moving to round 11. Here we have a position from the women's section game between Tan Zhenzi and Lu Miaoi. Uh, here white played rook to f1, defending the bishop on uh, c2. Um, Blackhead had a great opportunity to win some uh, material. You can pause the video and try to find what Black could play here. Uh, the idea here is to use the fact that uh, this pawn, the, the, the using the opportunity of capturing this pawn uh, with the fork. We cannot do it now because we have Bishop uh, on C2 uh, defending that pawn and what Black can do is to get rid of that bishop, uh, rook takes c2, rook takes c2, knight takes f5, f and, and here uh, white would need to either give up an exchange on g3 or give up a piece on h6, and eventually white would be up um, uh, material. So if, if they move the rook somewhere, for instance, would take back on h6, and we have three pieces for a rook and if they don't want to go for it if they play something like um queen to g4 
uh, season we um, take on g3 and uh, we are up a piece so very nice um, combination sort of removing the defender of f2 bishop uh, we have three more positions to go all of them are going to be from the open section we have here a game played between Maxud Luperham and Jan Nipomnishi uh, Jan here played the move f5 and you can pause the video for a second and try to find the um, lines that Parham found which essentially won him decisive material the idea here is to play rook to e8 king to g8 g7 excuse me is the only move after which knight to e6 forking the king and the bishop wins the material it's worth noting that something like king to f7 is not going to save black because after we take on d4 we are attacking the rook so if white if black takes on e8 we take on c2 we are up a piece here um black doesn't really have any in intermediate check and if they play something like rook to d2 with with play rook to d8 and again here something like king to e7 is not going to save it because white here has brilliant knight to c6 check and if capture we are up a rook so very nice um combination i don't i'm not sure if all of it was played or if Jan resigned after this but at this point yeah it's uh up a piece completely winning endgame uh, next we have a game between Darha Daniel and uh, Vincent Keimer here um, Vincent is trying to hold this down a pawn white has a very dangerous pawn on b5 he captured this pawn with the king king takes e4 and you can pause the video try to find the move that Daniel played which eventually won him the game it's a very nice move knight to c3 check so we are uh giving a fork to the king and to the knight and usually if you give a fork with the knight and one of the pieces that are being forked is a knight and you are in trouble but in this position that was actually the idea behind it because white here is uh deflecting the uh knight from a4 where it was doing a very critical job of controlling the b6 square and now we essentially push the pawn and this, this pawn is unstoppable the black king it's not in the uh, square and black knight cannot really stop the pawn so a very nice idea knight c3 check and b6 in this point vincent Kammer essentially resigns the game the last example of the day and of the whole uh tournament uh, here we have a game between Ivan Cheperinov and uh, Suleiman Valisher. Um, in this position, uh, Black decided that his pawn on b4 is you know, can be captured because he attacked actually how many times? One, two, three. They took on b4 with the rook, and they can um, pause the video for a very last time and try to find the continuations that uh, Ivan Chaparinov played to win a decisive advantage he took back the rook on b4 and after rook takes b4 it's discovered check rook to e4 check and winning the rook and the same would, would happen even if um, even if black had taken on b4 with the knight so uh, that was it those were all examples i had uh, for today if you're interested if you liked it feel free to check the uh, videos from day one or day two i will have the links to those videos in the uh description part of this one it was quite challenging for me to record the videos for three days in a row i hope it's informative i hope it's um helpful and if you want to let me know how many of those positions you have sold please drop a comment in the comment section that's basically it from my side i will not be covering the blitz part of the world rapid and blitz uh, uh, but um i would like to wish all of you the nice day and uh, hopefully see you soon take care bye